Hi, my name is Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our December Basics box. This month's box is going to be a mixed media box chocked full of color. We'll go over the materials, talk about different ways to combine them, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up while working with everything. Let's get into it. For our surface this month, we have a hot press watercolor paper from the Rembrandt Company. This smooth textured paper works perfectly with the next item in our box, a custom curated set of the King Art Pro Fine Liners. Fine Liners offer us smooth and consistent lines, and we can imply a sense of distance by varying the space between those lines. They're also great for pointillism, which is when we create value by densely packing an area full of dots. We can take the same principle and apply it to lines, and that technique is called hatching, or cross-hatching. And of course, fine liners are also great for line work, which we can thicken up by going over our lines, or by creating some line weight variants by filling in areas. For warm-up this month, let's sketch some of our favorite materials from previous boxes. You're welcome to follow along with me, or pick your own. I'm going to start off with a marker, since we shipped those last month, and I'm going to use a loose sheet of paper as a ruler edge. Next, I'll enclose my space and add a few lines in order to differentiate the cap from the center of the marker. Sketching with fine liner is going to be a bit intimidating, so it's important that you slow down and take your time when working with this medium. To differentiate the color cap on our marker, I'm going to use some parallel lines at an angle. Next, I'm going to do a color pencil, and I'm going to add a secondary line to imply a bit more form. For that line, I'm going to fill in the space, and this will give us a better illusion of three-dimensionality. We've shipped a fair amount of pencils this year, but I think my favorite were the Derwent Chroma Flows from our June box. It also had the Melts Color Pencil Blender, which allowed us to create really smooth, subtle transitions. Next, I'll go in and sketch in a brush, utilizing a center guide like we talked about in our technical drawing box. If you've been a subscriber for the entire year, you would have received six different brushes, with our most recent one being the flat brush in our October box. Of all the brushes we've shipped, I think my favorite was the Tri-Wedge brush that we shipped in our illustrative gouache box. So I'm going to do a little paint tube, and I'm going to use some cross-hatching to differentiate the label. A good exercise with fine liners is trying to simplify your subject matter as much as possible. This will make things a bit more approachable as you practice this month. The next item in our box is going to be a watercolor dot card from the Daniel Smith Company. Dot cards are a great way to explore a variety of colors, without committing to a full tube. Let's grab the Princeton pointed filbert included in this month's box and explore some of the shapes that our brush can make. Depending on how much pressure we apply, we can create both thick and thin lines with our brush. And by varying that pressure, we can create lines with a lot of line weight variants to them, like we talked about in our abstract floral box in January. If you're looking to level up your brushwork this month, I definitely suggest doing a series of small leaves as they're a great way to familiarize yourself with your brush but also to practice that line weight variance. Here I'll do a single stroke leaf and a wide leaf using multiple strokes, cleaning up my edges with the tip of our brush. To get a better idea of the colors available to us this month, I've gone ahead and swatched out our dot card on some of our Rembrandt paper. We've curated this dot card to create some fun, bright colors, but have also included some jewel tones and neutrals giving you the widest variety of hues of these premium watercolors. And if you're looking to practice your color theory this month, try mixing your own secondary colors with these primaries. It's a great exercise to improve your color skills and train yourself to distinguish between different hues. Taking a wet brush, I'll activate our watercolor on our dot card, and I'm going to use it to show you how I created the flowers from this month's featured artwork. Using a fair amount of water, I'll start by establishing the silhouette of our blossoms. While that surface is still wet, I'll dip in some of our quinoctone magenta and more of our opera pink in order to make some subtle gradients. Now this process isn't floral specific, so if you'd like to do something other than a flower this month, try taking some inspiration from our prompt, Dream. Having created a few leaves with our permanent green light, I'll go back in with our phthalo green, focusing on the edges to create a sense of form with our blooming technique. Now before we move on to our next step, it's important that we allow our paper to dry fully before going in with our fine liners and establishing our line art. I'll start by establishing the petals closest to the viewer and then working my way back in our scene. 
as we're working in a more simplified style, we don't have to worry about being too realistic. I'll take in consideration how the pigment pooled on our flowers in order to imply structure, but I'm not going to be too beholden to it. I really enjoy the loose gradient that the watercolor affords us, in contrast to the hard lines of our fine liners. As a final step, I'll go back in with our quinacridone magenta and fill in the center of our blossoms, making sure not to go over our lines as the fine liner pigment will reactivate when wet. Let's grab the final item in this month's box, a tube of Holbin Acrylic Gouache and Juan Brilliant. You can think of gouache as a more opaque and matte watercolor, but what's special about these tubes is that they are acrylic gouache, so they're closer to acrylic paint and will not reactivate once dry. Diluting our acrylic gouache will give us a semi-transparent layer, which is reminiscent of watercolor, but because we're working in gouache, it'll give us a more consistent color spread. Working in a thicker layer will allow us to use the gouache more like an acrylic paint, but I do like to dilute my gouache just a little bit to avoid any potential cracking that may happen once it's dry. Historically, gouache is used for large areas of flat color, making it a favorite amongst graphic designers. Now that we have a good understanding of our materials, let's take what we learned and apply it to something a bit more complex. Keeping with our theme of art supplies, I'm going to use our yellow fineliner to go in and sketch a small ink bottle. If this is a bit tricky for you, make sure to go back and revisit our technical drawing video as we go over a few tips that'll help you make a more consistent shape. Next, I'll go in with our brush and a little bit of water to blend out those lines and prep our canvas for our wet on wet technique. For our ink color, I'm going to use a bit of our cerulean blue and our ultramarine blue that way I can get some nice variants. Once that layer is fully dry, I'll go in with our Mayan dark blue and establish the lid on our bottle. When working with watercolor, it's really important that you let each layer dry fully before going back in. Watercolor has a tendency to go pretty much wherever it wants to, so the way that we combat that is making sure our layers are fully dry so we can still get some structure and form. For the label on our bottle, I'm going to take some diluted cerulean blue, and then once that's dry, I'll go back in with our blue fine liners and re-emphasize those edges. Ink is one of my favorite mediums as it's super versatile. This year, we've sourced over 19 different ink-based art supplies. When working in fine liners like this, I typically work from my lighter colors to my darker colors. We can always darken a line, but we can't really lighten it. For my darkest areas, I'm going to go over them with our green fineliner. This will allow us to achieve almost a rich black. Using our gouache, I'll go in and edge around our bottle, using it to create a nice contrasting background. Orange and blue are what's known as complementary colors, because they sit opposite each other on the color wheel. Complementary colors are intuitively pleasing to the eye, and other examples are red and green, or purple and yellow. Having gone in with a few layers of our gouache and letting it dry fully, we've got a nice flat background. With our background established, I'm going to go back in and darken up our label and also add some shine details around our bottle. Now it's important that you let the gouache fully dry before going back in with our fine liner. And if you do feel that your fine liners are clogged, you can always wipe them off on a bit of paper towel. Now, as I'm going to crop down my piece, I'm not going to worry about filling the entire background, but I am going to use a couple different blues in order to increase the contrast. That's all for this month's video. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxDecember. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to check out any of our previous videos, head over to our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.